Yeah, hello and welcome to the Long Island Weather Update and Outlook. Here, we'll try to get that outlook in, but uh, you can see today we had more thunderstorms across the area today with that cold front. You can see them popping up here uh, along the North Shore, the same areas that were hit, um, the exact same areas that were hit uh, the last time around, unfortunately, and uh, they got even more rain, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, uh, and then we'll cover the rest of the... Uh, week heading uh, toward the end of August here. Uh, luckily, it has quieted down now. But again, we had a lot of uh, a lot of activi activity today. Again, if we uh, go to the radar and rewind what happened this afternoon, we had a sea breeze front come in and touch off uh, showers and thunderstorms uh, across the North Shore. Again, the same area. And they just kept popping up over that same area again because there was a sea breeze front there. And these uh, showers and thunderstorms brought more rainfall to an area that's already uh, just dealt reeling from yesterday. And then we had this line come through around 6.30, 7 o'clock, a line of showers and some thunderstorms and some very impressive cloud formations. I have videos of all of this. You'll have to stay tuned for that. But I'll show you some of the pictures uh, of what things looked like. So uh, this afternoon, you could see uh, around 3 o'clock, we had these towering uh, cumulus congestus clouds and then uh, as we got toward uh, uh, and then we had these really nice cumulonimbus clouds uh, that uh, popped up here and this was again this is uh, Southern's Pond here absolutely beautiful here so all this I have videos uh, so I'm not going to go spend too much time over it uh, but these clouds were really really beautiful cumulonimbus clouds another look at it uh, and then this evening this evening we had more so here's another one here these were st popping up over the same areas it was just incredible to see uh over the same exact areas and then the second li our line of storms came in and again i have video of all of this i'll show you some pictures here though um just really incredible and towards sunset things really just got absolutely beautiful and uh you'll have to uh wait for the video to see some of these photos but they are uh absolutely just incredible here and we had an incredible rainbow look at that and then look at that just beautiful beautiful clouds absolutely stunning stunning uh and you'll see all that in the video uh and then you could see again there was cumulonimbus there i was trying to get some lightning there wasn't too much lightning but you could see the cumulonimbus there after sunset still kind of being lit up a little bit uh and then we could see the full supermoon emerge from behind the cumulonimbus clouds off to the east and there you go there's our full moon uh so uh yeah that's that's the kind of thing that we uh, got to look at today and you'll see all that in the videos but let's talk about uh the rainfall totals that we have right now so the latest rainfall totals uh let's see these are as no, these don't count today's rainfall so uh uh storm reports uh here's another storm report summary as of 9 30 um and uh, again, we kind of covered this flash flooding in St. James, and then they had more. Uh, let's see what we had. Yep, more flooding. Uh, Harbor Road closed, and there's a lot of damage here. Port Jefferson line is suspended east of Stony Brook. So we'll, uh, well, before we do any of that, let's look at the rainfall totals uh, that we have. This is now counting today's rain. So if we go and we look at precipitation here, and we'll just show the past, uh, let's see. Um, 12 hours and they got more rain from these thunderstorms the last thing they needed especially in this area here 1.18 in stony brook another 0.78 in rocky point um uh, this is this is from these thunderstorms this afternoon uh on top of what they already got so when we put this into look at what the amount of rain that has fallen in the past 36 hours in this area yeah take a look at this so this is uh this is pretty incredible stuff here Nine inches in St. James, 9.72 at Stony Brook, 8.12 at Port Jefferson, 10.56 in that's actually Miller Place. Um, so really incredible uh, rainfall totals here, very high rainfall totals, and this is causing a lot of flooding. Uh, we've had lakes and dams collapse. Um, so we've had dams and lakes collapse in, um, in Smithtown. Uh, and that's also affecting what's going on. So uh, if we uh, take a look at that for a moment here, uh, we will go News 12 here, and you'll see here what's going on here. Uh, they have a couple of uh, harbor road collapses, mill pond drained due to catastrophic storm. 
uh, in Stony Brook. Um, at least they're covering this a lot. Flooding from the Issaquah River uh, is causing uh, suspension on the uh, on the uh, Port Jefferson branch east of Kings Park. Looks like they've got some bustitution going on. Um, I'm not sure if they are showing where the damage is, but uh, from what I heard, the big pond, there's a big lake at Blydenburg called Stump Pond that has drained because the dam collapsed. Uh, so uh, there is flooding on the Nissaquag River uh, because of this. Um, so that's, that's, that's what's going on over there. It's absolutely crazy stuff. Uh, absolutely crazy stuff. Really is absolutely crazy. Uh, so uh, I know I've been talking about it a lot, but it's just incredible. So we'll go over our uh, highs and lows for the day. Uh, didn't get that warm today. I mean, really, we'll just pull this out. But it was very humid today, so you definitely felt that humidity. Let's see if we can get this to load. Um, and you'll see here temperatures, yeah, they got into the mid-80s in central Nassau. Out in Suffolk County, uh, we have uh, temperatures around 82. And again, we're just having slowness here. Yeah, 82 for a high at West Hampton. And yeah, as you got further west, there was more sun. So I guess there was it was warmer there. Jersey, upper 80s there. Um, didn't really drop that much at night, obviously. Nothing really to see. It was all about the rainfall. That's that's really what it's all about. Um so if we could put the 48-hour rainfall in, yeah, this gets even more impressive here. So, yeah, uh, how about three months of rain in a matter of uh, a day? Uh, that's that's the kind of stuff that they're dealing with out there and caused a lot of flooding and a lot of damage. You still have roads flooded. Um, so this is uh, incredible, incredible amounts of rain that, that occurred, and that's why we still have these flood advisories in effect uh, in these areas. It's, it's really just a big big mess uh we'll uh, go over our and i don't know if that was any records broken i'm assuming there probably was records broken but let's go and look at our statistics for the day i slip uh got uh this is just for today 0.44 inches of rain they're month to date 6.35 not so crazy uh as some of the other sites but that's still well above the normal of 2.68 uh rainfall uh if we look at bridgeport i think they're going to be higher uh month to day 4.30 um so they're not that much higher central park uh month to date 6.46 inches of rain so still well above normal uh for precipitation i'm kind of just looking at the precipitation numbers uh at this point but i wish there were some more sites these are just the um regular sites that they have um they don't really show um some of the other sites that are out there as far as uh, rainfall goes, because most of the ra heaviest rain fell away from the official sites at the airports, unfortunately. So um, anyway, um, that's what we have right now. So um, let's go look at our satellite. We have a well, we'll first go to the Weather Prediction Center map. See, we have a cold front moving through. And yes, finally a break from this. Lower humidity, calm weather, no storms, no rain. Uh, so we're going to be uh, we're going to be getting some relief from this. Uh, much welcome relief. So let's go to the CONUS view here. And uh, we'll go to the 60. Yeah, we'll show you what we got going on. Oh, I got to talk about Ernesto, too. Oh, that's right. All right, go to Ernesto. Hurricane Ernesto is still a 90-mile-an-hour hurricane. Yeah, that's right. As of 5 p.m., dangerous beach conditions continuing along the northeast U.S. coast in Atlantic Canada. Ernesto expected to become extratropical early Tuesday as of 5 p.m., its location is 43.8 north, 56.1 west, about 375 miles east of Halifax, Nova Scotia, about 250 miles southwest of Cape Race, Newfoundland. Maximum stain winds 90 miles an hour. Moving northeast to 26 miles an hour. Minimum central pressure 968 millibars to 8.59 inches. And hurricane force winds extend out to 45 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds extend out up to 220 miles from the center but uh, this thing is not going to be bothering uh, it's going to be out in the ocean but if you look at the cone here this thing may wind up heading to the united kingdom and causing problems there uh so that's something we're gonna have to watch as well uh, because again this is the kind of stuff that uh this is the kind of stuff that uh that never happened before but now now it happens uh so a satellite you could see the cooler air coming down from canada however i do see a little bit of smoke going over at least part of the great lakes areas um and we'll get to that in a moment but let's talk about ernesto 
Uh, here is the satellite of Ernesto. Yeah, racing past Newfoundland right now. Um, and it looks like it's just going to brush the coast there. Luckily, it's uh, not impacting directly because uh, it could have been very damaging if it was. But it looks like it is starting to become, have that extra tropical look. But it's amazing how strong it is that far north it really is. And if we go and we look at our um, observations here closer to the storm, let's see, we probably get some buoy readings here actually from this. Uh, here's a buoy that reported a wind gust. This maxed out at 54 miles an hour, wave height 13.5 feet. The water temperature 69 degrees. Again, very warm. Uh, so Ernesto is somewhere over here. Um, 67 degrees east wind at uh, 25 here um, at this site. But luckily, Newfoundland not getting hit too hard. It's out in the middle of the ocean. Uh, but again, it's getting all that strength from those really warm sea surface temperatures. That's just the thing. So winds have become north, west, northwest. Dew point still high, though. Uh, 70 degree dew point, but it will start dropping at ice slip. Very, very humid today, too. Dew points in the 70s. Obviously, that's uh, fuel for these uh, thunderstorms, uh, and that's uh, what we've been going through. Uh, so let's go and look at uh, some more satellite imagery, if I can find it. Here we go. Uh, so let's look at some more satellite imagery. That's the hurricane site. Where's the uh, satellite site? What did I do with it? Here we go. Uh, so and this is the this is the image here that we have. So we can take a look also at the. Uh, North Atlantic view as well uh, at Ernesto. So here's Ernesto here. Gives you an idea of what we have. I'll make this a little bit longer. Uh, so you can see, uh, yeah, there's the clouds of smoke going into Europe. But uh, here's Ernesto here. We'll just kind of show you what we have here. Just kind of, it's just really crazy seeing a uh, hurricane this far north. It's absolutely nuts. It really, really is. Uh, let's look at the Canada and northern U.S. And we'll take a look at the smoke uh, because uh, we will probably be dealing with this again at some point. Uh, so our air, I think, will start off with cleaner air from eastern Canada, but you still see plenty of smoke up there. Um, and that's not a good thing at all. So these fires are still going. Uh, let's look at southeastern Alaska. You'll see we still have these fires going pretty strong here in the Northwest Territories. Uh, and we're going to eventually be dealing with that smoke again at some point. Um, so, yeah, let's go and look at the models here and talk about uh, what we're going to be dealing with over the next week. And as we head into the closing, all this tropical stuff up, uh, let's go and look at the North American view. And we'll first start with the jet stream here. Um, so you see we do have a trough coming. That's going to bring us a really unseasonably cool air uh, this week. Um, and you can see here that as we head toward the, the weekend, we start seeing a ridge build in there. Yeah, look at that. Big ridge going well up. This is a very dysfunctional-looking jet stream, by the way. Uh, so, um, yeah, this is extremely dysfunctional. So not a surprise. We're going to see, uh, because when the jet stream gets that dysfunctional, we're going to see more heat. Uh, but enjoy the cool down this week. So we have that trough that's going to bring us cool weather. Uh, and then the ridging does start developing as we get toward the end of the month. Um, nothing crazy, but you'll see uh, huge ridging uh, in the east, especially as we get to the, toward the beginning of September on this on this particular uh, model run here. I'm not even going to bother with the URO. I'm sorry, I'm not. It's 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 the URO is not proven to be accurate at this point. All right, it really hasn't. I'll I'll go over it briefly at this point. Um, but the Euro has made several mistakes lately. Uh, and I just kind of prefer the GFS at this point. But both the Euro and the GFS showing ridging. And that means above normal temperatures. So I'm going back to the GFS now. And we will look at our temperature anomaly chart. Uh, so uh, here we go into this week. You'll see those blues and purples well below normal this week. Um, and up north there could actually be some showery weather. Um, and you see Canada, all right, uh, we have that above normal now, well in the eastern Canada now. So again, upside down, eastern Canada, and then Canada starts warming up again as we get toward um, next week. And then it looks like we have some cooler down. So you'll notice that there is red in the northeast, and that means above normal on the east. That means above normal conditions. Nothing crazy, but definitely uh, means above normal conditions. So let's go to the surface now. And... Uh, 
you'll see what we have as we go. So we got this low pulling out tomorrow, uh, increasing amounts of sun. You notice, though, there's a little bit of a pinch here up in northern New England. They could in some showers and clouds. Um, don't think it's going to be much of an issue for us. could just mean a few extra clouds, but it's definitely going to be cool. So we're between that and that high pressure keeping the cool air going. And then as we get toward the weekend, that high kind of drifts a little more offshore, but we still have fairly fair weather. And it looks like another uh, high does try to build down as we get toward the last days of August. Um, and then then you start dealing with a little more ridging as we get in toward September, you see right there. Uh, so go to the Weather Prediction Center. I'll just look at the uh, QPF for days. Let's do one through seven. And luckily, good news is I don't see a whole lot of rain here. I think we've had our fill. Uh, so... Um, Let's close this out, and let's go back to the models here, and we'll talk a little more about the shorter range here. Go to the HRRR. Um, obviously, we're not going to see any shower, a shower or thunderstorm activity over our area. We'll uh, run this. You can see that's all upstate. So uh, upstate and interior New England will have fair weather for us, uh, though, again, um, looking at the sounding for tomorrow, we're probably going to have a decent amount of cloud cover. Let's see what we have here. Um, yeah, it's showing some uh, cumulus cloud cover, but you'll have some blue sky in between. Uh, looking at the dew points and wind flow, here comes the big difference. So uh, the north winds take over tonight. Dew points drop uh, into the 50s tomorrow uh, and then into the 40s perhaps uh, as we get toward Wednesday morning. Uh, so this is pretty cool dry air that we are, that we are in, and that's going to mean very comfortable conditions. Uh, temperatures uh, tonight uh, by the morning we should have temperatures dropping into the mid to upper 60s um, the real cool down comes tomorrow you see tomorrow we're going to struggle to the, make it to the mid to upper 70s then tomorrow night everybody is going into the 50s maybe even 40s in the colder pine barrens locations of course my alley probably won't get there but uh, uh, and then for wednesday uh, again staying cool uh, temperatures struggle to make it to the 70s You'll see only in the 50s where they're going to have the clouds and showers in interior New England. It's going to be kind of gloomy where they got that cutoff uh, low pressure area there. But luckily for us, we'll be far enough away from that that we won't have to deal with that. Uh, we'll take we'll look, go ahead and look at the GFS here. Um, and you'll see, again, that cool, dry air. Northwest winds uh, pretty much that continues into Thursday, Friday. Uh, and then maybe you start seeing more of a... Uh, back into the south a little bit with some local sea breezes as, as we get toward the weekend. And you start seeing the humidity increase. Getting into the next week, you start seeing a little more humidity. Um, there's some on Wednesday. So next week, the last week, we will start seeing an increase in the humidity and an increase in the temperature. So uh, looking at your temperatures uh, for uh, as we go into Thursday, still staying cool, maybe a little closer to 80 on Thursday. We start getting maybe low to mid-80s on Friday. And at night, it will still be cool. Uh, but then things start warming up by the weekend. We start seeing that mid-80s. We start getting that warmer air mass. And mid, mid-80s on Long Island, close to 90 in Jersey. And then uh, start seeing those 90s start creeping closer next week. Monday, Tuesday, you start seeing some of that creep. But nothing crazy. Uh, the model was showing uh, a lot more heat a couple of days ago. So hopefully we won't see that kind of really bad heat. Hopefully it did back off on it a little bit. Uh, but things will get up get to be above normal as we get toward uh, after this week, unfortunately. Sky cover. All right, we'll go to the GFS here. And you'll see tomorrow we will have some, some clouds around. Not showing as much over Jersey. Um, showing clearing out. And then for Wednesday, again, a few, a few clouds around. Sun mixed with some clouds. Thursday, I think we'll have less in the way of clouds. Uh, perhaps uh, it's still showing some clouds. Friday. We have to watch this. Yeah, Friday will still be mostly sunny, and then the weekend we'll be dealing with some more cirrus clouds. But other than that, fair weather for the most part. Nothing really, no really major rainfalls. Uh, we're going to need this this time to, to clean up after all the damage that we've, uh, all the problems that we've been through uh, the past uh, 24 to 36 hours. Uh, so let's look at the RGM here. And you can see uh, starting off with a lot of clouds. And then by the afternoon, uh, after like maybe 4 o'clock, we'll start seeing some more sun pop up. And then Wednesday, it looks like mostly sunny conditions, maybe some clouds toward the afternoon, a few pop-up clouds. And then Thursday, uh, same deal. So maybe a few cumulus in the afternoon, but it'd still be pretty nice uh, overall. Um, a few strato cumulus. So the other thing, obviously, that we look at is the smoke. 
Let's go to the smoke models now. We'll look at the RAP first. Vertically integrated smoke. And uh, you'll see that. Not showing too much smoke in our area, which is good. Um, especially, yeah, it looks pretty good. Maybe very thin amount, but not really very much at all. It looks like whatever smoke is being generated up in the Northwest Territories is being pushed in a north-south axis, and it's not making its way to the east, but it is making its way into the middle of the country, and it is making its way up toward uh, the, into the Arctic Canada. Um, you can also look at the HRRR smoke model. Let's see, we get the zero Z running here. Yeah, we don't have enough of it in. So I'll, you know, we'll talk about that more tomorrow night. I mean, right now we're not going to be dealing with too much smoke. Climate Prediction Center. Let's lastly go there. And we'll go and look at our 6 to 10 day outlook. And you'll see, unfortunately, above normal temperatures will return for a lot of the country, unfortunately. Uh, much of the Great Lakes all the way down to the south, as well as into the northeast. The only area that's below normal is the interior northwest. Um, you can see that's where the trough will be below normal temperatures in the east. Uh, a below normal precipitation in the east, which we could use. And then the same thing continues in the 8 to 14 day with much of the country above normal, except the north, uh, the northern part there, the Dakotas near, near, near normal. And then precipitation equal chances to near normal for our area and above normal in the west coast and a little bit above normal in New England. But the good news is we're going to get a break from all this rain. Oh, boy, do we need it after we got more than enough rain, the ground has to recover from all this rain that we've gotten. Um, so I think that's going to wrap things up. It does feel like I'm sort of forgetting something. There's just so much on my mind. Uh, we'll just go to the um, look at the ice thing, I guess. We could look at that and see what the latest uh, is here. Uh, whoops. Yeah, here we go. So the waning of Arctic summer. Arctic sea ice continued. The fast retreat was observed in July through August 10th followed by a brief slowdown only to pick up pace again during the first half of August. The ice primarily retreated in the northern Beaufort Sea and the East Siberian Sea, and the ice also mostly cleared out of the Northwest Passage, whereas ice remained in the Chukchi Sea. Um, so we're still seeing a lot of, uh, you can see here, we're way down at the bottom here. Second lowest, and you can see this is, uh, this is the extent of ice, and all, the only areas that are thick are where it's white. These areas where it's blue, it's very thin. So we're still seeing melting. Uh, which obviously is we don't really get to the minimum until sep late September. Uh, so this is uh, we still got a ways to go. Hopefully we don't get the Blue Ocean event this year. But every year I think we're just going to get closer and closer. And once it happens, then things are really going to really just get really bad. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I just wanted to check tropical tidbits and just look and see if the Europeans' temperatures were any different than the um, GFSs. Um, Go to the European and see if the... Because they're really having significant above normal. So I'm kind of curious if the European really cranks the heat even more than the GFS as we get toward next week. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. So, um, But it will come above normal again. So those of you who want the summer weather, uh, you'll get it back uh, after a uh, nice little break from it this week. So I think that's going to wrap up this Long Island weather update as we rest and recuperate from all this crazy weather that we've been going through. We need a break. Enjoy those precious, calm, dry days uh, while we have them. Have a good night.